Hey everybody, so I just released a video yesterday talking or introducing RetroArch for the Arcade Stick Pro. Acme Plus had released uh, some source code for building um, an application to run RetroArch on your Arcade Stick Pro. Then later released the binary, which is the actual functioning application for you so that you don't have to go through the trouble of compiling. And now today, just a about an hour or two hours ago, he released an update to that uh, to that binary. So now this update includes the uh, graphical user interface or the menu for RetroArch, uh, which before it wasn't working, as I, I mentioned yesterday, or I mentioned in my previous video that the options button is supposed to be for the menu, uh, but it's currently, it currently wasn't working. Well, he fixed it today and he's already updated that, that binary with a new one and it's called beta two. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll link that in the description below, and you're looking for the release uh, for beta two, and it, it mentions the uh, menu being uh, actually functioning, right? So we're gonna go ahead and launch Sonic CD. Um, and there might be a, we might run into a, a situation where I don't have, uh, where it tells me that my RAM cartridge is messed up, or I don't have sufficient RAM, or it's not formatted. The only reason it's gonna tell you that is because I've implemented a save state. Let's see if it shows up. Yeah, so I got this RAM cartridge is not initialized, which is kind of cool because I can kind of talk a little bit about that and what to do. So I was hoping it would just run into the game and from the game, I was going to go into the menu or I'd play a little bit, go into the menu and do a, a save state. So let me try something right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the menu. So this is the actual menu and it has obviously a lot of things that you can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and load state, see if it actually has one, if I didn't erase it already. Yeah, so as you can tell, I mean, I'm already starting in a different, in a, it's not right smack in the beginning of the game, right? So, so that just shows that safe, safe states are working. That's, that's a good thing. So that's a plus. All right, so. Uh, that's that's one thing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the menu. I'm gonna restart it, restart the game, and then right here, I'm gonna push this button here. So I push the the uh, D on your Arcade Stick Pro. I push D. I'm gonna go down to memory, and I'm gonna push A or B actually. So here I have some options. Um, it well, it actually gives you some information. I'm going to push any button, which I'll push B. So I'm actually going to go up to um, format RAM, and it says format. I'm going to say yes. Format complete, and then I'm going to exit. So what that should do now is if I go to CD-ROM, which is there, it should launch the game. there so that's cool i mean I, I had to figure that out it took me a little while but uh it, it works so if you ever get stuck in that that screen that's what you that's something that you can reference you can reference this video for help on that so this is just launching the game like normal so i'm gonna go ahead and push start we're gonna do a new game And then I'm gonna go ahead and access a, so maybe I can change the state slot, let me see. So I'll change the state slot to one and I'll do a save state. There we go. Then I'll go ahead and exit the, the game. Go back to the main menu. I'll launch the game. There we go. Now I'm gonna try to load that save state. I think I was in slot one, right? So we're gonna see if that RAM cart crap happens again. So let's push start. Which I'm predicting that it's going to happen. 
yeah. So I could either do that whole thing again where I restart the system or I'm just gonna go ahead and load the uh, save state right here. So I'm gonna go to save state, oh, state slot. Let's do one, load the state. So there I am, launching off that ramp, right? Or if I wanted to go to the safe uh, state slot, go back to zero, and load that state. And here I am fighting that boss, right? So that's cool, it works. Um, so, so I just wanted to introduce the fact that there's an update to RetroArch and the fact that this uh, menu system or the menu actually works now. Safe states is just a, a, a part of it all. There's a lot of things that you can do. Um, but just wanted to let you know that, that there's an option now for safe states, which is really cool. Um, because uh, if you haven't already noticed that running RetroArch, you kind of lose some things that was part of the Arcade Stick Pro. Uh, you can't exit the game into that menu where you can save and load and do other things like your controller settings and all that because now you're using a different, you're basically using RetroArch now to run your games. So it was really important to have that menu there because now through that menu, you'll be able to load save states, make save states, change options, do your button configurations and all sorts of stuff. So that, that, that was a really, that's a really huge update. So the other thing I wanted to show you is uh, how to run, basically how to do what I did yesterday, but using your your hack. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the computer real quick. So let me see if I can get in here real quick, if I can just show you. So this is... Um, so this is the uh, Arcade Stick Pro, the, the Hilo Stick 1.2 build, it, as it is. I mean, it's it's got everything, you know, all the stuff that you're used to seeing. It's got all those game folders and all that sort of stuff. So uh, if if you were to use this, which is what a lot of people were probably like, well, how do I how do I do what you did, but with my hack? So I'm going to show you that. So it, and it's very simple. Again, you're going to be manipulating the same file. So in hack, you have MU info and ROM info. Okay. So I'm going to go into MU info and I'm just going to show you that one line that's there. So this one here, that's the Sega CD with the Mount H disk retro. It goes straight to RetroArch, where all the other ones are Mount H disk, which is basically the USB drive and everything else was the ASPH folder. Then you go into all the other stuff. For RetroArch, it's just, it's the USB drive, then right into the RetroArch folder, slash bin, slash Sega CD to launch uh, a Sega CD, okay? So you're going to you're gonna have to write that into your MU info, which is no different than what I had in the previous video, but now you're integrating it with everything else. You're basically just adding that line, okay? So we're going to go ahead and exit that. Now let's go into the ROM info. So here it's got a lot of stuff, right? There's just a lot of content. Um, one thing that I discovered is that I wouldn't recommend adding uh, your ROM from the RetroArch on the top line. So don't add it here at the very beginning. It, it causes issues. So what, what I discovered was that if you did that, it becomes like the, um, the, master, the master launcher. And you can only run RetroArch. If you start trying to try any, if you start, if you try to run any of your other games that aren't in the RetroArch folder, they're broken. It's not going to work. So I discovered that you can't do that. So what I did is I just kind of embedded it somewhere within this whole uh, file. I found basically where the Mega Drive ROMs were, and you can do your own folder. You can create a whole new folder with a certain system if you wanted to, and then just start adding content to that uh, folder because uh, that's just going to impact like your uh, your any file. So, but I just really just did uh, Sonic CD, so I'm going to go ahead and look for that just so that I can show you. It should already be there. I'm just going to change that just so it can show up there. So as you can see here, there's some Mega Drive content right there. And then right after that, I just kind of, I made a space and then just kind of separated it. You don't have to do that. So as you can see, 
there's that whole thing from yesterday or from the previous video where it's the ID, Sonic CD, the, M, the EMU, a Sega CD, which just goes back to that MU info. And then the path, there it is, mount, H disk, and then ROMs, which is that other folder. Now, technically, I don't think it matters. So this path, it doesn't really care where it's at as long as you map it to the right place. So you don't have to fill up that ROMs folder. You can use your existing ROMs folder, which I'll probably make another video just showing how you can actually test games that are currently in your hack, but running it through RetroArch. So uh, there's some examples of some games that might not run too well. So like X-Men is probably what I'm going to do where I'll launch X-Men uh, through the Hilo Stick uh, hack so that you can hear it because I think it has like some you know funky sounds, scratchy sounds, or the sounds off. Then we'll go back and edit the uh, it, this this info here, the ROM info, and I'll map it uh, to to a different emulator, which it'll be um, probably FB Neo or Mame two thousand or something like that. So we'll figure that out. And then you can test it that way. You're not changing anything else. The path will be the same. Your even your artwork's going to be still be there. The any file uh, will be the same as well. So the only thing that's going to change is the emulator. You're going to use uh, RetroArch or a core from RetroArch to launch the same game. So we'll do that. I'll, I'll I'll save that for another video. But anyway, I just want to show you. So now I've just included Sonic CD on the ROM info of your Hilo Stick hack, right? So it's there. Um, so that, that was changed. So that was added. The MU info was added for, to, to launch, uh, Sega CD games. And I also made a games, uh, in the games folder. I don't know if I can find it really quickly, but let me see. So much stuff. Um, so you make a Sonic CD folder or whatever the game is that you're making that you're going to call out. The same ID is going to be the same uh, game. Just trying to find it. I guess I could have done the search thing too. But... So there's Sonic CD right there. Okay. So you have to put in that folder if you want your artwork, right? It doesn't really matter. It's going to run regardless, but... There's the folder and it'll have your the cover for it as well. So we should be set up. Everything should be good to go. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and let me see if I can eject the disc. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. And we're gonna just launch it real quick just so you can see that it works. All right. So this should look a little bit more familiar to most of you. It should be on Neo Geo because I was on English, yeah. So there's what you're used to seeing on your uh, Hilo Stick hack, or Hilo hack, whatever, game systems. I put it in Genesis. So I'm going to go there. And I also know that it's the last game on that any. And I didn't show you the any file, but all I did was just make an entry to Sonic CD. Because that's what it was called. So there it is, Sonic CD in all its glory, beautiful uh, artwork. We're going to go ahead and see if it'll launch. And there it is. Um, let's see what happens here. I don't, think, I don't have a save state on this disk because I just made that change now, so I haven't done any save states or anything. Yeah, so it goes straight into the game. I don't have that RAM issue or whatever, so that's cool. And pushing uh, settings or options, right? Is it options? Yeah, options. You have your menu. So here you can do save states and do all kinds of stuff. So 
So yeah, so that's, it can be easily implemented into your existing hack. Uh, I was just showing you yesterday on a, just a, a blank slate, but all you, you can integrate it into your hack. You can change the emulator that's running current games. There's a lot of things you can do that, um, that I, I guess I'll, I'll make another video of kind of showing you how to test current games and how to switch it to a different emulator so that you can kind of test and see if you can actually get better performance out of certain games. Not all of them are going to perform better, but there definitely is a list of games that are going to perform better than what you're used to. So that's exciting. That's something to look forward to, and you guys should start messing around and trying to figure this stuff out. But that's why I'm doing these videos, trying to help you guys out to get you up and running so that you can test out your own content and uh, try things out. All right, until next time.